DiBiase here in the black trunks. George the Rooster in the white trunks with the Mexican flag. Interesting note here about George Armenta from 2000 to 2004, he was 12 and four, and in the past two years, two and three, so certainly hasn't seen the same success that he once had, although in those past few years, he also, as you mentioned, fought Elvin Ayala and Edwin Rodriguez, so certainly stepping up in competition. He also has been in the ring with Yuri Foreman, Sechel Powell, so he's been in there with some pretty good fighters. So for Vladin, this is an absolute test for him on where he is in this stage of his game. He's 11-1-1, coming off of a draw and a loss. Started his career 11-0, built up confidence quickly, became almost a celebrity in the state of Rhode Island. Now he was hit with reality, having lost and having had a draw. Now he's in there with a guy who Elvin Ayala put away, who Edwin Rodriguez put away. These are top-level fighters for Vladin to really know that he's on that top level. He's going to not only have to beat George, but either beat him convincingly or knock him out. Vladini Biasi is at the level where he really has to step up his game. He's a very good fighter at that Rhode Island club level as referee Danny Schiavone rules Biasi hit the canvas there a slip. Can he get it done at that next level? His last two fights have not been easy. Fighting to a draw with John Mackey, that's not a negative thing per se for Vladini Biasi. Keep in mind John Mackey in his previous bout won a decision over former Canadian Olympian Donnie Orr. John Mackey was a fighter who came in here against Biasi a lot better than his record would indicate. Not only did he have a draw with a 13 and six, John Mackey. John Mackey took that fight on less than two weeks notice. So for to take a fight with John Mackey is tough enough. To do that on short notice and not have time to game plan because John Mackey is a very tough fighter. He does not give you any openings. It's very tough to get inside and pick your shots. So that was a very frustrating fight for Vladimir. He needed the time off between October and now to get back in the gym, gain his composure, work on the small things that he was doing wrong, and now get back in here against a tough fighter in George Armenta. He may not be the George Armenta of 2004, but he still is a very tough fighter. And I want to see what Biasi learned from his last two fights. Dennis Grachev is going to be fighting soon against Ismail Silka in a fight that if he wins could earn him a shot at the WBC light heavyweight title. That kid's no joke. And like we said about John Mackey, journeyman, but a very tough fighter. Not an easy day at the office for anyone. Closing seconds here of round number one of a scheduled six in the main event here by Jimmy Birchfield's Classic Entertainment and Sports. A busy round for both fighters. Looking at some more stats here, Pete. One thing that you love about Vladi Biasi, he may have taken the normal steps in his first few fights of fighting guys who didn't have great records to get his feet wet in this sport. You know, he came over from Cape Verde, jumped right into football, right after football, he really jumped into boxing pretty quickly and had some instant success. However, the combined record of Vladi's opponents are 108 and 65, a 68% win percentage. For a guy fighting on a local level in Rhode Island, most of his fights, that's a pretty good opponent's winning percentage. He's not fighting bums and getting his record up to 11-1-1. He's fighting good fighters, earning hard-fought victories. It's just the last two times out, obviously, didn't go as planned. And Biasi is the type of fighter that will step up to the plate. For example, tonight's fight is scheduled for six rounds against Armenta. I could be wrong. This might be something you have to reference on box rec. But I don't believe Biasi has ever competed in a six-round fight. He jumped from four-rounders right to eight-rounders in order to take a short-notice fight against Joey McCready on ESPN because he wanted the national TV opportunity and he wanted that exposure. This might be his first six-rounder. That's a good point. On ESPN, you got to fight at least an eight or ten to be that co-feature. And he did that right here on the co-feature of Hank Lundy and John Molina. That was a great ESPN telecast, and that certainly wasn't a... Great night for Hank Lundy because he lost that fight. We'll get into that another time, Pete. But for Vladin, that was a great night. And that's really what kicked off the whole Mr. Providence feeling around Vladin Biasi that he started to become well known as more than just a boxer. He was, you know, famous for being Mr. Providence. And then he was hit with the reality with the loss to Grachev, the draw to Mackey. And now he's back in here with George Armenta. He's been humbled. Believe me, he's been humble. When you talk to him now, he realizes his mistakes, and he's in there right now, and he told me yesterday he's ready to grind. He will grind to get this win, 
nothing flashy. He's not going to go in there and try to land that big punch. He knows what he has to do. But if that punch opens up, I really would like to see Vladian step up and take that punch. That's what he's going to need to be able to get past this guy and get to that next level. Like Elvin Aiello, who after he beat George Armenta, won the WBC USMBC title. And Edwin Rodriguez, who as we know, after he beat him, has gone on to win a bunch of big high profile fights. Yeah, Edwin Rodriguez currently a top 10 rated super middleweight. And getting back to Biasi, Biasi's celebrity-like nature here in Rhode Island, I think you can attribute that to a number of things. Obviously, what he does inside the ring, but beyond that, people like you and I, Pat, will admire Vladini Biasi's work ethic as he hits the canvas and what is not an official knockdown. Clearly his feet went out from underneath him. People like you and I, Pat, admire him for his work ethic. He's always on weight. He's always in the gym. He's a fantastic athlete, which probably helped him make the transition from being a football player to a boxer far more easier. Outside of that, what makes him so popular, very personable, very likable. He's out there on Twitter and on Facebook communicating with his fans regularly. He's very marketable. He's a promoter's dream. And not only is he very marketable, a great person and everything, He's a hard worker not only in the gym but outside the gym. He actually owns an ice cream shop that he opened and started himself. You're talking about a guy who immigrated from Cape Verde, got his U.S. citizenship two weeks before a fight that he had here at Twin River, opened up an ice cream shop, and now is a professional boxer on ESPN. I mean, he is really living the American dream by being able to get to where he is now. And if he could take his career a step further, it really would be a storybook career for someone coming into the country and wanting to do what Vladi is doing as this round comes to a close. Well, as we're talking about the many accolades deservingly for Vladini Biasi, I would be remiss if we did not mention that Georgia Armenta has done some fairly good work here in the first two rounds. And it wouldn't surprise me if this fight is even as at this juncture or if one or more of the ringside judges have Armenta ahead. Nothing has really separated either of these two fighters in this bout. And he, as we saw in not only the last fight with Eddie Soto and Jason Pyatt, but another fight we saw earlier. If you're in this fight tonight, and granted these guys are in the backstage, so they don't necessarily know all the judging, but you cannot leave the, the scoring up to these judges. I'm not saying these judges are wrong, but leaving a close fight up to judges is very dangerous especially when you're building your career like this, coming off a lot, you have to go out there and dominate. If you think these, not, these first two rounds could be even, Vladid or George have to go out there and really try to dominate these next four rounds to secure this victory. Yeah, fortunately, the state of Rhode Island does have fairly competent judging, but like you said, you never, ever want to leave it in the hands of the judges if you don't have to, especially if it's a close fight. George Armenta once fought for the USBO title. Well, has shared the squared circle with some of the great fighters we mentioned earlier, like Yuri Foreman, St. John Powell, just to name a few. He is one of those fighters that will pretty much go anywhere to take a big fight. And you gotta love that in a fighter. And what's interesting is tonight's fight, the contracted weight was 168 plus one pounds. George Armenta insisted on the plus one to the 168 super middleweight weight limit. However, he weighed in yesterday well under at 166. You mentioned Saku Powell and Yuri Foreman, two fighters he's previously shared the ring with. Those were junior middleweight fights. So he's fighting a few weight divisions above perhaps his best years. Nice one-two by Vladini Biasi. Southpaw able to land a few nice punches there on George Armenta. Nicknamed the Rooster. Not really sure how a nickname the Rooster translates into boxing. Maybe we'll find out somehow in this fight. My favorite boxing nickname and perhaps my favorite sports nickname of all time belongs to former cruiserweight title challenger Darnell the Dingling Man Wilson. For a long time I wanted to see him and Matt Godfrey fight in a CES show, but alas it was never to be. That would have been too smooth versus the Dingling Man. Now we have Mr. Providence against the Rooster. Vadim 
obviously has way more at stake right now than George Armenta. Armenta, 34 years old, on the road. He's already 14 and seven, coming off of losses. For him, if he falls to 14 and eight, not the end of the world. He'll still get a bunch of more opportunities by other promoters bringing them in. For Vadim, he's 29 years old, coming off of a loss and a draw. He has 11 wins under his belt, two wins on ESPN, so we know that the networks like him because he had a great knockout and another great win on, the, on ESPN. So he's still very marketable. He can get back into those big fights. For Vladim, there's a lot at stake right now. Way more than George Armenta. Yeah, the pressure is really on Biasi tonight as opposed to Armenta. I think Biasi likes situations like that. Biasi's a prideful guy. There was one time I was at Manfredo's gym doing some interviews with various fighters, and I was interviewing Demetrius Andrade for a TV interview in relation to an upcoming fight he had. I didn't find out until about a year later that Vladini Biasi told me what set a fire underneath him to work harder that day was that out of the fighters I interviewed, I never asked to interview him. This is back in the four round days of Biasi. But that third round right there, best round of the fight for Vladini Biasi. So you could pretty much say that he became Mr. Providence and got on ESPN all because you snubbed him at an interview chance. I won't take that credit, but I'm sure it had some in. Now you see his head trainer, Orlando Valls, in the corner of Vladi Biasi. Tell him to get in tight and drop him. Just take a step to the right, he'll run right into it. Interesting, he's saying take a step to the right. Come on, get every fucking thing working. Take a step to the right, and then Armenta's going to walk right into that punch. So obviously with a left hand of Biasi, he's talking about that left hook, or that right hook of Biasi. So we'll see exactly if... Armenta walks into it, and if that is the finishing touch here. Nice left hand by Biasi and Armenta. His two gloves drop to the canvas. That is an official knockdown for Vladini Biasi. I'll tell you what, Orlando Valls looks like a genius in the corner right there. He told Biasi exactly what to do. Take a step, hit him with that hook, and that's what he did. And here we go with Armenta coming right back at him. Vladin going to work with the uppercut. He has him up against the ropes, and Armenta doing everything he can, really, just to tie up here. Armenta looks at least momentarily to have shaken off that knockdown. See if Vladin can take advantage of that, but big knockdown there by Vladin, at least for a confidence standpoint. Rooster now trying to battle back with Vladin, having been knocked down earlier in this round. Gloves touch the canvas. Vladin still battling. Vladin actually, Pete looks like he's actually widening these swings and really put a lot more power behind these punches. Maybe he saw something and Armenta with that knockdown that he had. That maybe he thinks there's another opening to knock him down again and perhaps knock him out. Well, we mentioned what a good round. Round three was for Biasi. To this point, round four has been better. Certainly after two very close rounds to start this fight off, you would believe that Biasi won round three and certainly is ahead in this round, having knocked Armenta down. And now working here at the body. body. Continue hitting the body. Looks like he buckled Armenta over twice with those body shots. Maybe leaving Armenta bend over where Biasi could perhaps land an uppercut of some sort. Minton now really bending at the hips a lot more, almost over-exaggerating it. Come on, come on, 
Final seconds here of round number four, a round in which Vadim earned a 10 8 scoring, having knocked Armenta down at the beginning of the round. And it was at this point against Alvin Ayala where Georgia Armenta quit on his stool. And though he was on the receiving end of a beating from Biasi in round four, it does appear that he is continuing. And correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't it a body shot that really did the most damage from Ayala? Yes, it was a succession of body shots. And folks, remember, immediately at the conclusion of tonight's show, step around as we award tonight's Fighter of the Night Award, presented by Hubboxing and Classic Entertainment Sports. Check out a replay here of the knockdown. But he, yeah, really just hit him with a pretty nice left hook. After a body shot, he had him up against the rope and hit him with a nice left hook. And that's what his trainer, Orlando, was talking about. Step to your right, hit him with that left, and that's exactly what he did. It looked beautiful. It worked to a T. See if he can keep doing that, because if it worked in the fourth round, see if it continues to work. But if I was Biasi, I would continue to go to the body. And it appears that's exactly what he's doing, loading up on that left hand, ripping it to the body. Trying to break through the defense of George Armenta. And Armenta, very wisely, is going to clinch and stop the onslaught from Vladini Boss Biasi for as long as he can. But Danny Schiavone did not waste any time in breaking them up. I tell you, if Vladini can keep this pace up for the next round, two rounds, Armenta's going to have a long round and a half ahead of him to be able to survive this because Biasi looks like he's ready to pick up the pace and continue working to the body and getting Armenta up against the ropes. He's going to try to tie up a lot in the next round. Nadine's <laughs> corner urging him to work the jab. Nice uppercut there by Vladin. Pete, at this point in the in the fight, do you think that Vladin is ahead by enough on the scorecard where he could work like this for the next two rounds? Do you think he really should apply the pressure here in the last minute and perhaps round number six? I believe he's ahead on the scorecards. However, round one and two were very close, but I do think the knockdown coming courtesy of Biasi in round four does give him somewhat of a security blanket. coming back very nice with that one two and I meant to really his only defense is to tie up with Mr. Providence and another nice right hook there by Armenta he walked literally right into that one 20 seconds to go here in round number five scheduled six round bout between 11 one and one Vladimir Biasi and 14 and seven George Armenta Biasi just missing with a could have had a very vicious uppercut. I meant to do everything he can to get out of the way and get through round number five. We're going to head to the sixth and final round between Mr. Providence, Vladimir Biasi, and the rooster, George Armenta. See what Orlando has to say here in the corner. It worked for Vladimir the last two rounds. And Orlando actually is telling Vladimir to keep coming with those uppercuts. As I noticed in the middle of that round, he started to land those uppercuts, and Orlando now is trying to key on that, tell him to land those uppercuts. But going back to what we mentioned at the beginning of the fight, because Armenta has been knocked out by Ayala, who's the US NBC champion, because he's been knocked out by Edwin Rodriguez Labama, who actually was just announced as a ringside guest by Jimmy Birchfield, 
how important is it for Vadi to go out in this sixth round and try to get a knockout, or should he just go out there and try to earn this victory, get back on the winning track, having lost and a draw in his last two fights? Well, through five rounds, I have Biasi had 49 to 46. I think after his past two fights, a win is a win, and whether it goes to the cards or whether it's a stoppage right now. It's pretty convincing that Vladini Biasi is in charge of this fight. So at this point, if you're in Vladimir's corner, you just want him to win this round. Absolutely. And if a chance opens up, you take it. I agree. And there's almost a chance right there. Is that was a loud, thunderous punch there from Biasi. A nice right hand by Armenta just a moment ago, however. And now Biasi clinching. And if you're Biasi, you really can't get cocky or overconfident in this round. Armenta has 11 knockouts and 14 wins, Pete. He has as many knockouts as Biasi has wins. So he certainly can't get too ahead of himself and go for that home run hit right now. And another left hand by Armenta sneaks in. Final two minutes of action here between Biasi and Armenta. Keep in mind though, Pete, that last fight we thought that Jason Pyers had won all six rounds. And then all of a sudden you go to the scorecards and it was a split decision. So you never know what's going on in this fight. Piazzi does have one knockdown, which he earned in the earlier rounds. Armenta, a very heavy puncher, is going to have to go for the gold here in the last minute and 30, which looks nice. like Yassi's taking a few punches this round. Yeah, nice right hand by George Armenta. This has been a very good round for the fighter from the greater Washington, D.C. area, George Armenta. Vladini Biasi has been forced to clinch a few times in this sixth and final round. He's been on the receiving end of some clean blows that I think, I think he shook a little. And I tell you, Pete, this... Sixth round went for Vladim to just win this round and coast to a victory to now survive the next minute and then earn the victory. Right now, he has to do defense. He can't worry about earning points scoring-wise because our mental land some nice punches in this round. And the last thing you want is for Vladim to get caught with something. You can hear everybody ringside right now chanting for Vladim to get his hands up. Vladin still punching, nice hook to the body there. 30 seconds to go in round number six. This is the final round of the main event and of the evening here brought to you by CES Boxing. Armenta leans forward and lunges. Would have been a nice chance for an uppercut there by Biasi. Continues to go to the body and come back upstairs with that left hook. Final seconds to go here between Mr. Providence and the Rooster. Vladin lands a nice Right shot right to the face of Armenta, and that is the end of the fight. We're going to the scorecards. Vladin, Mr. Providence, Biasi, George the Rooster, Armenta. A very tough fight there by both fighters. To tell you, Armenta went down in the middle rounds. He did not give up the entire fight. He was going for that knockout punch, and he wasn't going to stop punching until that final bell rang. Tough fight for Vladin. But I was very impressed with the way Buddy came out here and handled himself, having a draw in his last fight and a loss in the fight before that. I think Buddy handled himself very well and as a true professional. Yeah, I thought Biasi handled himself very well as well. On my scorecard, Vladini Biasi wins 58 to 56. I did have an even round in there. That was the opening round and a 10-8 round in round four when Vladini Biasi scored that knockdown. I thought George Armenta did close that fight very well. I gave him round six, but rounds three through five, Biasi swept and he should be walking away with his first win in his last two fights here. Vladini Biasi in a matter of moments. And interesting enough, you have it 58, 56. If it wasn't for that knockdown, that's very close to a draw in your eyes. If that wasn't for that knockdown, but yes, he it won is. that round. But that's very, very close to a knockdown. We'll see if the three judges see it the same way. Neither corner right now, Pete, looks overly confident that they have this one in the bag. I certainly wouldn't be overly confident if I was in either corner right now either, the way the judges 
have been scoring this fight. I know Vladini Bias has skipped from four rounders to eight rounders. I think right now he might wish it was an eight rounder. And let's find out from the ring announcer, Bill Carpenter, who won this main event. Ladies and gentlemen, after six tough rounds of boxing, let's go to the judges' scorecards for your decision. Judge Enscungio has the bout 59-54. Judge Wayne Lima, 59-54. And Judge Sam Martino scores the bout 59-55. All three judges scoring your winner by unanimous decision, Mr. Providence, Vladini Biasi.